based on the images that are used to visualize the, the main components and the metaphor I use, qualitative data analysis is like exploring a data landscape. So what you can see here is the data landscape. My drawing, I admit it's not that beautiful, but it contains a number of elements that we will, or that I will refer back to and that I wanted to have in that particular image. Before I actually send people to begin their journey, I present this model to them, the NCT model of computer assisted qualitative data analysis. N stands for noticing, C for collecting, and T for thinking about the things you notice. And this model will kind of accompany people along the entire journey. And I will refer back to the components while I talk about these different pictures. When the journey begins, I tell people to just let the idea flow is to have some bubbling thoughts and sparkling ideas as it is expressed here on that part of the image and to mark those things that are interesting in their data. So that's a process of noticing. And in case you begin to code already, that's the process then of collecting. If you find similar things like you have flowers here in this kind, you have you know, blue, blue and red and green flowers, and at first you mark them all as, as flowers because you're not quite sure about all these different aspects of them. Well, you have, you know, in this image, a forest there, you have some houses, you have some people. You just mark those things that you notice in your data as like a first preparatory step to um, gain some more understanding and then to take a closer look at your data and to become more specific of what you see in the data uh, in the process of noticing and collecting. So in software support analysis, this is a process of coding. And how do you arrive at this more detailed picture means building your coding system, creating either categories or creating subcodes um, in order to describe your data precisely. And in the book, of course, I provide the mouse clicks on how to do that. And so some people just start with noticing lots of things and end up with lots and lots of code, codes, maybe five, 600 codes already after having coded two interviews. And then I tell them you know, how to become, how to conceptualize, how to be, become more abstract to arrive at this well-described data landscape. And other people code roughly and then they need to subcode those, they need to divide the data in order to see it's not all flowers, it's different types of flowers and the flowers has different type of characteristics um, and so on. Another um, metaphor or picture I use is the uh, the image of or playing a puzzle and actually in, in workshops we do can play a virtual puzzle because playing a puzzle is something we have done some at some point in our life so we're familiar with that um, and so coding is not something we have never done it's something we do all the time we categorize people we categorize things we just have to transfer that knowledge that we already have based on the coding process in software so the puzzle kind of works quite well as um, it's an image you can give people. So here we have um, all the pieces of a puzzle, might be a thousand or so, and it's all unsorted, all, all unstructured, and now we have to um, turn it into a picture. So what a lot of people start out with is to um, pick the pieces um, that mark the frame. We can do that also to describe um, the main characteristics of our data, type of people, type of data, uh, and so on, before we go and look into more detail, basically the content of our data, not just the variables surrounding it. And then, yeah, you see this 
puzzle emerging. There's actually a castle in the middle. Um, and we know in the puzzle that uh, um, what the picture is is uh, is going to be at at some point. But in yeah, so we collect all the pieces that that will be a puzzle, and then we start subdividing. We know there's a roof, you know there's a win there are windows, there are doors, where you have an idea of where these things are, and it it becomes a form, and uh, and we start seeing something in the data. So the process of coding. Is similar, even though if we draw analogies, they are um, they not they not meet the requirements 100%. But it gives an idea on how this process is going to work. It's one of the difficult issues in software supported analysis is basically what we do with all these codes, the things the software provides, um, and one of the dangers is that we have too many codes. And I use the image of a swamp, so we don't actually want to end up in the coding swamp. Oftentimes, this is a reason to leave software, that people have a thousand codes and don't know what to do with them. Um, so I provide some guidelines. If you have a lot of codes, how to get your way back into the software, to stay within the software, to build your structured, structured coding system. So that you see that little red guy there with the flag. So I'm kind of telling to people if if you have five six hundred codes after two interviews, this little guy with the red flag should kind of turn up in front of your NRI and uh, remind you of of what to do in order to stay within the software and to complete your analysis in a successful manner. When we conduct our analysis using software, we do have to think about some technical issues as well. So this is illustrated in this figure here, that we do have to um, think about how to prepare our data, which data file formats are supported by the software we are using. We have to think about backups, if we need to transfer projects, if we work in a team. So this seems to be all boring, but uh, this is essential if you have lost or sorry, you have lost all of your coding in your data, you're going to be very happy. So these kind of issues are also covered in the book at the beginning, of course, uh, when you start setting up your project. Then you can move into the interesting stuff in working with your data, noticing things, collecting things, building your code system, sorting and ordering your data, and turning into kind of a, a structured um, body of content. And once this is done, you can actually do all kinds of interesting things with your data. That is um, the, yeah, the, the, the tools the software provides to analyze your data in depth. Of course, coding already is a form of analysis. We uh, develop concepts and we get some ideas about our data, how things might be related. But then we have some further tools that actually yeah, go much beyond whatever is, is, is ever is possible with manual analysis, um, really supporting the process of comparing and contrasting different uh, data types, groups in your data, uh, also based on different con uh, content of what people have said or what you have observed, or in order to um, reach uh, these nice conclusions, how things are related in your data, uh, we need to write, and writing is a very important process also to achieve analysis. So it's not about just clicking your data, um, it's about thinking through what I have been coding, so we have noticing, collecting, and thinking. So the third component, thinking, comes in, of course we always think, but that comes um, in very focused in the last later parts of your analysis and that writing is taking place in memos partly also in comments and in my data landscape you see benches um, all over the place and this are the benches of reflection in order to point out you need to sit down and you need to reflect you sit with your data and it's not just all about coding and clicking through your data your analysis is happening in the process of reflection and writing, and the software only helps you to find the relevant pieces of data in your data.
This process I've just been describing of analyzing your data in more detail and in more depth, of course, is also accompanied by specific tools in the software. And in the book, I describe them uh, one by one and offer example queries and um, example uh, situations of when which tool can be used. What this image now here shows are the aha moments that you will get by going through this uh, process, similar to going on a hike and being on top of the mountain, feeling the reward for all the hard work that you put in by seeing the world from a different perspective and also your data and then uh, seeing how it all fits together at some point. <clears throat> And when we see how it all fits together, we can start drawing network views. That's the, function, uh, the term that is used in, in Atlas TI. Uh, so we actually then uh, can create models, um, see how things are related in the data, and can create um, maps and, and map out um, what our data landscape looks like. And then we actually into the Atlas TI network view function. The whole process of computer-assisted analysis is uh, summarized in this image here. I'm start, starting out by uh, building a coding system and by um, turning your unstructured data into a structured form that you can then work with and move on to the conceptual level of analysis using the more the advanced analysis tools that software provides and starting to see how things relate to each other, moving into visualizing the linkages in your data, building network views. And this is accompanied throughout by this process of noticing, collecting and thinking. And that's why the whole way of or this whole process, this method of working within software is called NCT. Um, method of computer assisted analysis. On the left hand side you see um, the process of writing various types of comments and memos that is accompanying the process and that is also exemplified in the book. The research question memos, the images of your network views that present your mapped out data landscape will provide then the major ingredients of your report alongside uh, some direct uh, quotes or images of your original data material. I hope that you enjoy reading the book and that I can provide some helpful hints and tips and of course also description of how to operate the software, the mouse clicks that belong to the process.